Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of the this week's edition of the People Progressing podcast. Today I have Holly Duckworth with me. Um, she's a keynote speaker, uh, an applied mindful leadership advisor, which I love. Uh, people listen to my podcast know I love talking leadership and we have a leadership guru on here today. So Holly, I appreciate you coming on. And the first thing I always ask every one of my guests is, where did you grow up? What did you like to do as a kid? Some people that maybe b- big influences on your life and, and then we'll kind of take it from there. Well, Coach Joe, I love your question. And, you know, I like to start every, every interview actually um, inviting people to be mindful. And I know you, you were dashing to get to this interview. So was I, and I'm sure our listeners are too. So before we jump into the questions, why don't we just take a second, uh, take a breath in and yes, out. I need that. Yeah, and, and I think our, our listeners do too. There's a lot going on in the world, um, no, no judgment, um, but let's just take a second, whether you're driving your car, you know, be fully present on the, on the steering wheel. If you're sitting and listening to this at home with your cup of coffee, knowing right where you are, that there, there's a reason that you're here listening, listening to, to this show and uh, mindfulness is the practice of being fully present in the moment. So I just, um, as we, we launch into to this People Progressing podcast, I think it's important to, to honor right where you are, whether you're a mom listening, you're an executive, you're, you're a sports coach. Let's just start there with a breath in and out as I'm honored to, uh, to share my story. Joe, great, great first question, because as a People Progressing, where you start is not necessarily where you end up. Right. And as we, we have this, this conversation, I'll tell you that uh, I grew up in a town called Wilsonville, Oregon, very uh, small town, um, almost equidistant between Portland, Oregon on the West Coast and Salem, which is our state capital. And, okay. um, I don't have the opportunity to, to share the story too often, but when I do, it makes a big difference in that uh, I grew up in a, in a trailer park. And if you're not familiar with that, that, uh, that or you have a vision that comes up, I would say uh, brown and white, double wide trailer. Uh, trailer park with all rights, responsibilities, and privileges <laughs> therein. Uh, you know, and I and I say that with with love and respect, just to kind of to set the stage that where you start isn't where you grew up. And my dad was a machinist at at Freightliner, which is the big eighteen wheel trucks you might might see uh, going along the roads where you are. And my mom had the the privilege of of being a stay at home mom, which is um, more so even now a, a privilege than than mm-hmm. it was uh, uh, those decades ago when I was born. But uh, I. I'm, I'm honored for the humble roots and where you start isn't always where you end up. Yeah. I love that story. Uh, did you, did you, what did you like to do? I mean, did you like to play instruments, play sports, be, I mean, what were some of the things that you love to do as a kid? Oh, whoa. That's a question I haven't gotten asked on a podcast before. Um, gosh, you know, that, that's so funny. I mean, I, I'm laughing right now with all the reboots of the, the television shows. I was a Alyssa Milano fan. Uh, like I can still see the poster I made for her in my, in my, my, my paneled paneling, you know, remember, remember yeah. paneling, oh, old yeah. school oh, paneling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, come, yeah. it's been so old. It's coming back. Um, <laughs> That you know, it's what kids did. You know, watch TV. I remember, you know, dancing in the in the backyard, um, you know, riding my bike. Um, all those those fun fun little little things. I uh, we went to you know elementary school and still keep in touch with, with some of those friends. Our school wasn't too far far away, and I went to Wood Middle School. I remember middle school. We rode the ski bus. It was a big day to get yeah. away from your parents and ride the ski bus. Yeah. And then I went to a high school that was actually about forty five minutes away. I went to West Lynn High School. Our, our town was so small we didn't have our own high school and people really had to go so far for high school and you know in high school I you know played tennis a little bit here and there not not at the not at the the, you know the JJJV (laughs) and um, was an FBLA future business leader of America uh, chapter president and I studied meteorology uh, weather forecasting so I got to work in high school at our local uh, weather weather forecasting team so I don't know that's kind of a broad swath but it was it was it was a great adventure for sure. No I think it's always interesting to find you know what what made people excited what made them tick what made them you know give them to where they are now it's all a story and every piece of that what you just explained is is part of your story to where you are now and it kind of paints that picture of why you got into leadership you know you you said it future business leaders of america chapter president 
leadership. And, uh, you know, so that always paints that picture. So did you go to college then after that? You know, great question, Joe. Um, I have the honor and privilege of being the first generation um, college graduate in my, there in my you go. family. That's awesome. Uh, which um, is, a, is a statistic that a lot of people have. And whether it was in a traditional school, I had that, right. that fortune. For, or if you're thinking about going back to school and maybe you'd be the first generation in your family that uh, that, that courage to, to go, go forth and, and do something that way. And I ended up uh, applying, applied to like five colleges, got into all five. And we, you know, we talk in leadership about beliefs. What do you believe? And kind of what's your network? I think that's a really great story for those two concepts in leadership, because sadly, because I was a first generation college graduate or to enter and ultimately graduate, um, I didn't have that the network that some people mm -hmm. do, that it's just automatically, of course, you go to college, of course, you go to college. And because my parents went to college, well, I didn't have that. So I also didn't necessarily have the skills to know what questions to ask or conversations right, to have right. and all the resources that were available. I actually um, got accepted to Purdue University, big, big name school yeah, with uh, yeah. an atmospheric sciences and meteorology major. But I believed that I wasn't good at math somewhere along the line. I picked, picked that belief up. And ultimately, without that network and without that belief, I ended up choosing to uh, stay local, went to a, a small school in Oregon called Merrillhurst University, mm -hmm. uh, did two years there, went to school full time and worked for Bank of America. Uh, Love those, those two intersections. And then a girlfriend, her parents came to me at the bank and said, you know, it's you know, our daughter went away for two years, she's coming home, and uh, she kind of needs a mentor, would you be willing to talk to her about your experience, and um, she, her, and her parents convinced me that I had good enough grades and experience, of course, I always did, but I didn't believe that I did, that I could get into a private school uh, called Linfield College, mm -hmm. um, just south of, yeah. um, of where I was living in Wilsonville, and ultimately transferred into uh, Linfield University, now it's called Linfield College at the time, um, and graduated from there. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to tell you the year, Joe. <laughs> no, you're fine. I don't, it doesn't matter the year. All that matters is the journey, the process, right? It, it's, it's, it's about the process of how you got there and the process of not giving up, the process of having to go to college and work at the same time, the process of having to work in, and go to college and be a leader at the same time, someone coming to you and asking you to be a mentor for their, for their daughter. It's all about that process of your leadership journey. And it's so fascinating to me because everyone has their own story, their own process of the way, where they got to. Um, well, I would add in there, Joe, something to think about too, is sometimes you have to believe in other people's mm -hmm. belief in you till your own belief uh, kicks in. Yes. And there's been, you know, several times in my life and that, that college one is, is an example of, you know, another family believed in me, supported me, not that my family didn't, because they certainly did at the mm -hmm. level they were able mm -hmm. to, but it was the alchemy of both yeah. that, that that brought me into that. And then there's been certainly uh, career opportunities as well, where other people have said, you know, I believe in you and, and I believed in theirs until mine kicked in and then mine kicked in and we just, we just kept the stair step going of, of the journey. Love it. And I, I remember as a, as a coach, I, I used to tell players this all the time, that I believe in you more than you believe in you. And when that happens, we kind of got a problem. I need you to get that belief system up. But there's always that little man on your shoulder. And I want to go kind of, that kind of leads me to my next question because you, you had mentioned it. When you said you were graduating high school and you had a, you had a chance to go to Purdue University and major in what you were going to major in, it was the weather climate and you didn't have a belief in yourself in terms of your math skills what was that little man or that little woman that little holly what was it saying to you do you remember what was that belief system that was telling you you couldn't do that You know, I mean, conceptually, it was just, you know, you're not good at math, you don't have the money, your finance, you know, the financial resources weren't even there to go visit Purdue. So it was just, I'm not enough, I don't have enough, I'm, you know, that that downward word spiral. And um, that was really it. 
So now knowing what you know now, what would you have, what would you tell your 18 year old self? <laughs> Go now without knowing how. And, and that, that, that advice is advice I continue to use for myself and, and for my clients, even, even today. Sometimes we have to, to go into an experience or a journey without kind of knowing how it's going to end. You might have a, a soft lob ex example. I, you know, we're going to talk about my books, but mm -hmm. you know, if you'd have told me at 18 that I would be an author of, of four books, some of them award-winning and best-selling, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. But it took a little journey of my belief and other people's beliefs to, to move through each of those four book journeys mm -hmm. and um, each one I kind of had to go now without knowing how and each book started with title x and then by the end of the book the title completely changed mm -hmm. but you know yeah. go now without knowing how oh god what a great statement for people to take with them so okay so you graduate from Linwood now what's the next part what's the next step of your journey so it was a Lynn Field. Just I mean, Lynn people, Field. People, I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, for, for um, you know, I, I believed, there's that word again, um, that the degree only opened the door. It was all that experience I had in, in banking and retail that kind of, kind of allowed me to walk through the door. I um, went to work for, at the time, I think we talked about this, the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes baseball team, short season single A affiliate of the Giants. I really couldn't have cared less about baseball, but I loved the energy of event planning and all that. That job wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, Maybe, maybe we should call it a first attempt in learning. And um, through again, that power of the network, somebody approached me from my sorority days in college and said, you know, I'd like you to apply for this job at what was then called the Portland, Oregon Visitors Association. I did not do it. Um, 60 days later, they hired somebody, didn't work out. This person came back to me again and said, I really think this job is for you. Should you say yes? And I, I tried, you know, go now without knowing how. I ended up applying for that job and little did I know it was a, a great arc in my, my career. I worked as the membership sales manager there for a year or so, then ended up um, getting promoted to convention services, um, planning all the major, uh, working on with the planning teams of the major events in the Portland metro area, everything from you know, education events to sporting events. I think I mentioned to you, I was on the team that planned the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, uh, the North American Gay Amateur Athletic Association, Softball World Series, um, from an event planning stand, and just got to meet the most amazing, unique people doing this great job. I loved it. And then somebody else recruited me to go work for Meeting Professionals International. I worked for them for three years, managing all of their chapters in the Western US. Beautiful opportunity to, to travel and lead, lead from the question. Um, in that role, I wrote business plans and budgets with the volunteer leaders. Uh, and then ultimately decided um, in 2010 to reboot my life and um, quit my job, divorced my husband and started my own company, which uh, we probably don't have enough time in this podcast to, to capture that that 18 months. But again, people progressing and that it's, you know, sometimes you have to let go of what was for something new, let go of this job for something new, this relationship um, for something new. And there's been a lot of interesting turns along the way, but all of them uh, done with love for self and love for the people in that community. And, I, you know, what I want people to understand, too, that that journey you just described didn't always, wasn't always rosy. I'm sure there was plenty of adversity along the way in each one of those steps. Can you talk a little bit about some of the adversity, maybe not in great detail, but more importantly on how you got through that adversity and what you did with that adversity? Wow. That's an interesting question, because as I kind of on the fly think about the question, again, I think that that's even about a progression that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe in those early education years, the answer was often about seeking a mentor, seeking a parent, seeking a question, and that would get you through the adversity. And then maybe as I, as I've grown, it's, it's that and adding additional resources maybe um, you know I love to read maybe it's a it's a book it's a question it's again the, the network and sometimes it's also 
um, with mindfulness, it's about going within. And, you know, early in my career, it might've been about reaching out for help. And I still do that, but now it's also about reaching within for that wisdom within me to help me move to the next personal or professional decision uh, that I might be making. So when did you, when did that kind of change for you? And what I mean change is this, you said that you looked a lot outside for wisdom and help and guidance and support. Now you're in a position where you're looking more inside for that same wisdom, guidance, support. What helped you change? What helped you make that switch to, I'll be honest with you, to me, it's, it's more believing in yourself and having that confidence in yourself and that trust in yourself to look at yourself instead of having to look somewhere else. (laughs) <laughs> Joe, you're cracking me up with that question. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I, I, my, my first answer is always the right answer. Gray hair, <laughs> wisdom, <laughs> just, just that wisdom of, of, of life experience is probably where that, that transition happened. Um, yeah, good, I mean, that, good that's, and, kind of, that's kind of the easiest answer <laughs> there. But it's good and bad in life experiences. Absolutely. That's why I want people to understand too, that you you've taken the good parts and gained wisdom, but you've probably taken a whole bunch from the bad parts and gained so much wisdom. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I made the decision around 2010 to move to Colorado and I was on a path I thought was going to look like you know, this particular job, this particular relationship, this particular house, all of those things. And I'm the only one in my family ever to move from from Oregon. So it was a big leap for me. And ultimately arrived here in Colorado and that job dissolved, that relationship dissolved, the housing situation, everything. I felt like I was standing on on quickstand and I I had to make a a decision, you know, am I going to stay in Colorado and continue to rebuild my life here or am I going to go back and there was probably you know hindsight's always 2020 there's probably no right or wrong answer either one I would have taken would have been a great path I ultimately ended up choosing uh, to stay in Colorado I thought I'd be here two years Um, Memorial Day I just celebrated 10 Um, but definitely that was one of the the low points or uh, people progressing moment where I, I had to both uh, listen to that intuition. I remember a day mm-hmm. sitting in the in the basement of that townhouse that I had at that time. And you know, what is mine to do? What is mine mm-hmm. to do? Asking my asking myself that question and listening to my intuition. Ultimately, that wisdom within saying, you know, stay and all will be provided. And then starting to reach out to, you know, job opportunities, church opportunities, friends, connections, and and rebuilt um, my life uh, life here in in Colorado. So definitely. Um, having that courage to see some of those dark days as just opportunities for more light to come in for sure. Love that. And I, I always say that you can look at things as opportunities or obligations. And you just beautifully described how you went through some adversity, um, job change, relationship change, moving states, all those different things that some, some pretty severe adversity that a lot of us go through. But in the end, the belief in yourself and the belief in your own wisdom, the belief in what you could do, the confidence that you had your in yourself won out. That makes sense. And when I look at that, you, you've gained that confidence in yourself through overcoming the adversities, uh, the willingness to go get new jobs or take on new challenges and those things. And I think that's where people get stuck a lot is they, they don't have the confidence that they can make it or something happens. What are they going to do and all that kind of stuff? When do you think that switch for you, that confidence level to say, I'm staying here and I'm going to make it work. What was that process like for you? I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's just so intriguing to me because there's so many times you could have said, oops, I'm just going to move back and start over where I'm comfortable. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I mean, I think the, the answer is in the question, which is really that willingness to be there now, be in the smelly, nasty, scratchy, mm-hmm. uncomfortable, and, and, and take that time to pause 
and feel all the feels. Beautiful. And then, and then recognize you have a different choice. I mean, this moving from pandemic life experience to endemic life experience, mm-hmm. all of us have a have a life reboot like we've never had before Mm -hmm. and that's that's everybody on the planet right so like i think you know some of us are trying to rush through that transition and that's that's fine but i think there'll be a point where they're going to have to go back and say you know wait 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 what do i want or you can kind of do it now and be in the field some of us that two years was was great and fine and you know no no transition for others there was oh my gosh we're all in our cocoons but um, it, you know people progressing that recognition that life life had a challenge globally for a couple of years laugh cry scream joke whatever and then start asking yourself that question who do I want to be now what do I want to have what do I want to create and stay in that question the 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 messy fun of that mm-hmm. for for you know a day, a week, an hour, a month, whatever it is, just keep asking yourself those questions and then let that kind of evolve into whatever you want to create for 2022, 20, 23 and, and beyond. But it really is that recognizing and taking the time to, to go ahead. And I mean, I remember I, I call it 24 hours on the floor. I kind of forgot about this one, Joe. I call it 24 hours on the floor. I, I, I've, Two moments in my life. One, uh, sadly, when I did when I did make the choice to divorce, and then this coming to Colorado, where I said, "Okay, I got 24 hours on the floor." I grabbed a box of Kleenex, I closed the bathroom door, and I let myself, you know, ball it out for 24 hours. And Which I said, "Okay, okay it's 20, yeah." And then I said, "It's 24 hours." Okay, boom. Put on your big girl panties and and, and go for it. Whatever whatever had come from that experience. So I kind of forgot about those those two moments. But allowing yourself whatever is the equivalent of that for you. No, that's great. I think it allowing yourself some grace, right? And allowing yourself to feel is I I think that's important. We all have those feelings, and people people um, deal with situations differently. You know, a, lo- a loss of a loved one. You know, some people are going to mourn longer than others. Some people, you know, whatever it might be, what you just told everybody is it's okay to do that. However, you need to do that. Yours was the 24 hour rule. I love that. I think that's a beautiful. And I've told people that before too. The other thing you mentioned in there, Holly, which I think is really important. And I said this on last week's podcast, and I'm going to say it again. I think that the greatest power that we have as human beings is the power to choose. We have the power of choice. And you just mentioned that, that I chose to think this way. I chose to go through this way like this. I chose to stay. I chose to stay. And and then I chose to go out and find people in my church community. Then I chose to do this because you everything you chose to do was a positive step for you. And I want people to understand that they have that power to choose the same type of things, that they can choose positive things for themselves. They can choose to keep learning, to keep growing, to keep progressing. That's their power that they have to choose that. They also have the power to choose to stay where they're at. And if, you know, I, I, t- I say this on almost every podcast. One of my biggest things right now is I saw a stat and it just fueled my whole power, my whole purpose. Seven out of 10 people in America are disengaged at work. And a lot of those seven out of 10 or 70% of Americans choose to stay there, to stay there, to stay in that disengagement, to stay in that driving down the highway, going to work mad because they have to go to this job that they don't like and they're not engaged with. And they choose that. The other 30% of Americans, they choose not to. They choose to take the leap of faith, to choose to to believe in themselves, to choose to do those things. And that's what you just described in in what you're doing. And that's what I want to give people the power of that choice, if that makes any sense. I'm going to add to that and say... Yes, please do. Choose to be human. Remember to be human. We, li- I'm, I'm working on a program oh, right that. now called called Human Skills in an AI World, and all of the executives and meeting oh, planners that. that I've been talking to have been asking for this program because 
we are a world that rewards human doing and almost forgets to reward human being. That's one of the lines oh, from, 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 from everyday mindfulness, from chaos to calm and really um, the yes. And I, I, I used to say, you know, mindfully, you know, you got to put away your phones to be mindful. I, I think it's owning the yes. And that we, how can we be our best human selves in an AI world? Um, and in any of your levels of um, progressing that, you know, in 2022 and beyond, we're going to have to think about what's the, what's the people element and what's, and how do I keep the people element in the, in the AI and the, mm -hmm. the, the tech, the tech mm -hmm. world, because the more, whatever industry we're in, we still crave that human, human touch. I don't care how many chat boxes come up on my website that sometimes are human and sometimes aren't human there's always something more that I need to do that's going to require me to pick up the phone or go in person. I, we actually had this experience uh, yesterday, Joe, our, my husband and I are redesigning our kitchen and we had to go pick the countertops. I did all the stuff on the web. We sent all the emails. We got all the price quotes. We did all this Well, we happen to be out. You still got to touch the mm -hmm. countertops. You still got to mm -hmm. see. And um, after we went to, a, you know, boatload of places. He said, okay, we've got this quote from Naomi. Let's go meet Naomi. And I'm like, no, we don't need to go. And Eric's like, Holly, you teach the power of human skills. Let's go in and shake hands mm -hmm. with Naomi. And we, we had a, still kind of a few other, but it, that human factor in sales in progressing it, whether you're leading a team or, you know, parenting, any level is still I, I believe a choice that that ultimately is valuable and has transformed my my adventures for sure. I love that. I I call it um, people versus data um, in my world. Um, I got into a part in education where the people who took over our district were more interested in data than they were people, and I just don't believe in that. I think it's you know if you're running a business, you're running an educational system, or whatever it might be. Your people produce the data, so you better take care of your people first. And I think we've gotten to a, an age where seven out of 10 people are disengaged at work. I think 85% of those 70% of people say it's because of the leader they work for. Okay, well, how many of those leaders are data-driven compared to people-driven? And uh, that's kind of my charge now is to get people to understand that you got to lead from your heart lead people first, make sure you have empathy for them, make sure you're mindful and engaged with them, you're present with them, um, because it's a lost art. I really believe it's a lost art. Let's get into your books. You've written- well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Joe. Oh, God, I want to yeah. add, before we, before we go too far, is where in your life can you employ the yes and? Yes to data and to human. That it doesn't have to be a versus. Right, 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 right. It's the yes and the yes and the yes and. You know, right. when I was, um, I, I, you know, I, I always say about my my divorce. I divorced my husband because I loved him, my my first husband. And people go, "What?" Well, the data showed that he was on a path going to X, and I was on a path going to Y. Mm -hmm. And because I loved him, I let him go into this other experience. The same could be said about the the seventy percent in the job. You know, like they're doing a job that they particularly maybe don't enjoy, maybe mm -hmm. they're not getting the data and the results that they want personally, professionally, that sometimes closing that chapter is the yes and, you know, yes, I'm going to let this go. And that experience is going to be better for it. And your yes, life so. experience, you know, yeah. how can we use the data and the humanness, the AI and the human skills to create a right. better business, a better family, a better team. Um, but that when you, anytime I see a, it's got to be black or it's got to be a white, yeah. it's got to be a purple. I always say the yes and, yes and, yes and. So, so sorry, I had to add that. No, to add that joke. gosh, that's so cool. It's so powerful. It's, it makes so much sense. Just think about that. I'm, when you're talking about that, it, it makes me think about our country, <laughs> right? How divided our country is, you know, it's either this way or it's this way. And there's no yes and. In, involved there. Um, man, that's powerful. Well, and that's, you know, we don't want to dive too deeply no, into those topics, but I, I think there's also, there's also a think. place to say, how can we put our ears on our heart 
and listen to somebody who perhaps has a different perspective. And, you know, that could be school mm-hmm. shootings. It could be mm-hmm. abortion. It could be mm-hmm. who's, who's the governor, who's the president, who's mm-hmm. the, whatever those are, that this is a, an invitation as people progressing mm-hmm. to say, you know, I have my opinions. It is, it is again, humanness. We are hardwired mm-hmm. for fight mm-hmm. or flight. We are hardwired mm-hmm. to pick A or B, one or two, whatever it is. And we also have this unique gift to put our ears on our heart and listen to the other person mm-hmm. and, and, and continue, as you said, to choose and to choose again and choose again and choose again. Love it. And I, I said this on last week's podcast too, but I have a saying that we need to learn to listen so we can listen to learn and be open to learning and respecting and enjoying each other. I mean, there's, there's things that, you probably believe in that maybe I don't or whatever, who cares? But I, I can sure respect you for who you are and what you do and in that. And I can learn from you. Um, just kind of what we talked about before, when you have adversity, you, you can either choose to learn from it or you can choose to put it, put it away and never grow from it or anything like that. And it's just going to sit and fester and you're going to be better instead of be better. And uh, man, you're opening up so many things. It's, I think we could probably go for about three hours on this. Um, well, but that, I mean, that's a cool thing to think about too. People progressing is mm-hmm. there's the individual people, the, mm-hmm. the people that you're interviewing, the Joe mm-hmm. and the Holly, mm-hmm. which is important. And we're certainly, we've had a lot of great episodes on that, but there's also the people progressing, the mm-hmm. macro of, of all of us progressing. And that's, that's, you know, the people in Colorado, the people in the US, the people in North America, the people on the earth, like, like people progressing. And, and I, I think every time we put our ears on our heart and we listen, we might progress just a little bit more. And yeah, I get it. That might sound, oh, Holly's just speaking off, you know, oh, yeah. fairy dust, fairy dust and pixie dust. That, that might not solve the things that we have going on in our, in our Congress right now. But I do believe over time, if we keep playing that long game, um, we are, we are people progressing to Mm -hmm. the highest and best we can um, as individuals and as the collective. Man, that's cool. You got me thinking so much. Um, I'm going to go to this. It says, as a contributor to the New York Times, producer host of the Everyday Mindfulness Show, a columnist to countless industry publications, Holly works with stressed out leaders to create peace, presence, and profit. So those are your three Ps. Because I've, I've written a book called The Three Ps, but my three Ps are different. Um, tell me about that. What is, what is that? Stressed you know, out leaders. Everybody is, everybody is stressed. And, you, you know, we can pick up, we don't have to pick up a data report to, to know that, that people are stressed. Um, what if stressed became success? And I, I don't want to bypass the stress. I and mean, we again, what I said, you gotta you gotta be in what is mm-hmm. and transcend and bring forth, bring forth something new. And I always, you know, one of my mindfulness strategies is if you're in in a downward spiral, and we all have those days, God, I'm angry today. Well, instead of repeating, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed, like take the first letter of the negative word, angry, and turn it into awesome. I am awesome. I am awesome. And you may not feel awesome when you're first saying this, but the more you say it, the more you become Mm -hmm. it. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. I hear that all the time. I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. Okay. Well, what if instead of saying, you know, I'm outstanding, I'm outstanding, I'm outstanding. And we, we slowly, if each individual person in the starts to shower themselves with how awesome and outstanding they are, then that rubs off on you and rubs off on you. And we start to change that, that collective energy for sure. Um, so, you know, peace, presence, and profits again, Joe, I mean, it's just such a great, great conversation we're having here is again, that intersection of head data and heart data that, you know, we can't, you and I are both givers. We, we want to give of our time and our financial resources, but we can't give from an empty tank that, mm-hmm. that, you know, peace, presence, and profits is that intersection of the, the head and the heart, the, the data and the people that, you know, I, if, if my leaders are more present more calm, more peaceful, they're able to produce more profits. The profits for the company are returned, you know, 
to the to the employee. So that that's part of the the, the stressed out leaders peace presence and profit Love it. thing is um, you know people people have always you know said said to my mom you know gosh you know your daughter is, is so, so amazing and, and and whatever and it's that that sense of poise. Well, I think that sense of poise comes from this this intersection of head and heart, data and and people and. You know, I think Joe, you and I both agree that's that's that secret sauce uh, that we want to capture and magnify in our working world today. Well, and it, I think it's always when we find people like that, it's people that we like. We look at and go, "God, I would love to be like that." <laughs> you know, peaceful and kind of relaxed. And you used another P word. It's, it's amazing how many P words, how many words that start with P are really powerful words. There's another. P word powerful, but you use another one, poise. I look up to people so much, who, people who with poise, because I think if you have poise, you have peace and you can come at things so much differently um, than people who are stressed, anxiety, overwhelmed, and, and, and they bring that to the meeting. Uh, I talked with Rachel Weaver last week a little bit about this, about how you're coming to the meeting um, and how your, your energy is coming to that meeting. Are you coming to that meeting as overwhelmed and stressed and anxiety and, and, you know, uptight and all those things. But when you come to that meeting like that, you're not present with somebody and that person can feel that from you and you're not getting very far with that person. You're not going to help them grow and progress. So having that peace and poise coming into that meeting really helps that other person get uh, present with you as well. If that makes sense. Well, and I have found in all of the leadership retreats that I've I've hosted, the keynotes, the presentations that I've done, that that little activity we did at the beginning of this podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's just take take a breath. Let's just center and let's all be here now by just taking that thirty seconds to a minute. I have been able to shave hours off meetings where, you know, people are checking their phones or they're this. Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys, let's, let's all commit to be here now. This meeting is scheduled for an hour, but I bet we could get it done in 45 minutes if we're all just fully present. Boom, boom, boom. We pound it out. And that's, that's got dollars and cents written on it. You know, mm-hmm. any meeting, take you know, the average out, hourly salary of the, the people in that room of every minute we can cut off of, you know, boring meetings um, and turn into, into productive meetings by just being present for one another, the better off we are. This is so cool. Um, next question I have is how do people get a hold of you? Well, I know I kind of, I kind of stepped on your, on your segment about the books. I'm easy to find on, on social media. Um, hollyduckworth.com is my, my website. Um, I also have my company leadership solutions, INTL leadership solutions, international.com. The, the books, the trainings are, are all located there. I'm H Duckworth on LinkedIn, but I, I think it's just important for people to remember your presence is the greatest present you can give to the mm-hmm. world. And so um, I know you, you love my most recent book. It's called Sell More, Stress Less, 52 Tips to Be a Mindful Sales Professional. Uh, that one is co-written um, with my husband. Uh, he was a director of sales at Hilton Marriott, Starwood, and a lot of major brands. And we took his um, award-winning sales background and my mindfulness background and fuse them together to invite people to sell in a different way. And again, in this endemic phase of whatever we're moving through, we're all selling something, whether it's a product, a service, an idea, uh, whether you're, you know, selling an idea to your kid at home to, you know, eat the broccoli or you're, you're selling, you know, cars out, out on a car lot or any product in between, uh, this book will really support you. And then, you know, I quoted from Everyday Mindfulness from Chaos to Calm in a Crazy World. You know, some of us just needed daily inspirational reader and this is a neuroscience secular book mm-hmm. so i know a lot of a lot of people have various um, spiritual or religious daily practices if that works for you go for it if you're looking for something a little more secular a little more fun i all of my my friends family I, everybody contributed and each day you get an inspirational a theme for the day a quote and a story and then the invitation to write an intention so you can be more clear about on the good days and the interesting days, how do I want to put my energy in motion each day? So, so Joe, I know you're, you're trying to wrap this up, but I'm curious, no. you know, if we're going to, if we're going to set an intention for, um, for the work that you're, you're doing out in the world, not just this podcast, but your, your whole, your, your whole ecosystem of offerings, what's, what's your intention, that one word of how you will put your, your energy in motion. 
for me, it's growth. It's growth. It, it's um, lifelong learning and helping people grow and progress. Um, when I was a coach, um, I coached my players for not only the present time, but I tried to coach my players to get them ready for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years from now um, to help them with what's going to happen, you know, what some of the things that life is going to challenge them with. And if I could do something like that, um, I tell people this all the time. I was very fortunate to be a part of five state championship teams as a coach. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with my players. But the feeling of accomplishing that with a group of people coming together and getting that done was just amazing. But I get more satisfaction now at, when I talk to one of my players whose wife just had a baby or who just got a new job or started an own company or overcame this or overcame that. That is so much. I was talking with one of my ex-players last night. And he just got a job offer to be a, a coach at a college. And he called me, he said, I just need to know what you think. I need to, I need to hear from you. And I said, this is what you've been waiting for, man. Go for it. This is what you've been, this is what you're made for. So this is so awesome that you're getting this opportunity. He goes, that's all I needed to hear. I needed to talk to you. That's so much more gratifying than when it, even winning a state championship. And I think that can be the same in business. I really do. I think business leaders need to have the same kind of mindset of where are their people going to be? I, I think every business leader should lead in this way. They're leading their people for their people to take over for them someday. And if you had that mindset of that growth mindset of I'm trying to help this person grow so they can take this over someday, it would really help them out as a leader as well and give them some self-satisfaction as a leader. Um, so you got me going there. Um, sorry, that's probably a well, long-winded no, answer. I think it's, an in, it's, it's an invitation to to the to the listeners. You know, pick your one word, and you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure I, I'm sure Joe uh, somewhere on the posting here, and there's a way to get get a hold of you and, and me. You know, if you're, you feel inspired listening to the show, send us your one word. What's your one word that yeah, you're looking yeah. for? Let 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 Joe know you're listening. Let us let us know what your word is, and sometimes kind of how you define it. Uh, Joe, I love that you shared that story there there on, on growth. You know, my word for 2022, I pick one word every year is success. Mm -hmm. And um, I get to define that. What does success look like? What's it feel like? Yeah, What's it sound yeah. like? You know, and, and for me, it is that intersection of, of personal and professional and it's growing, you know, my, my speaking business, I founded the American Mindfulness Association. It's um, success is starting to get, get that off the ground. And, you know, people who are progressing, you know, have the, the focus and grounding of intentionality and that willingness to, to, to say, this is what I'm doing. This is who I am out there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm growth. I'm success. And invite others to be a part of that. So I uh, would encourage you if you're listening to let Joe and I know what, what's your word and, and how can we support you in that? Yeah. And you can get a hold of me through coach Joe White. Uh, can, yeah. Coach Joe White consulting.com. Um, you can get my uh, email is just coach Joe White 97 at gmail.com. So I would love to hear from you. I think that's a great way. I'm not a very good marketing person, Holly. So that really helps me because I, I really would like to hear from people out there and how this is helping them. Because that's the only reason I do this. Um, and I, I just have, I know you got to go, but I have three quick questions for you. Um, my book is called The Three Ps, Finding Your Purpose, Perspective, and Passion. So I ask every guest I have on here, those three questions. What's your purpose? What do you, if I asked you, what is your purpose? What would you say? Um, dang it. He should have given me this question in advance listeners. And I, and I, I <laughs> love that this is a great demonstration that it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm progressing. I'm listening to the show. And I like, like even here is the, 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 the positioned here as the expert on the podcast, you know, um, you know, I mean, I think, you know, my, my purpose I've always said is, um, to educate, connect and inspire. There you go. And I, I say future global leaders, okay. you know, that when I get quiet and I ask you, what's mine to do, what's mine to do, I educate, connect and inspire future global leaders. Okay. So I'm going to skip over perspective and I'm going to go to passion because I believe people challenge me on this, which is good. 
that purpose equals passion and passion equals purpose. So what's your passion in life? What, what's something that, what's the thing you love to do? What's passionate for you? I love teaching. I just love teaching. And again, that does align with the educate, connect and inspire. Mm-hmm. But really, um, and that, that comes from self-learning first. I'm the one sitting at the pool with the, the business book or the leadership book or all that. I, I love learning and I love sharing that learning. And that, that, that brings passion for me. And that equals your purpose. There you go. Okay. So now the question that what holds your purpose and passion together is your perspective. So what's your perspective on life? Whoa, asking that after the interesting week we've we've had in mm-hmm. the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't let your problems define your perspective. I, I'm as we do this interview, I'm looking over my my screen to to my vision board for the year. And it says we create ourselves as we go. And there's another big word, dream, another big word, love, another word, joy. And I, and I think my, my perspective comes down to all things are possible. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and that holds your purpose and passion together. And when things happen, like the shooting at an elementary school, that really kind of makes us question our perspective and makes us question our purpose sometimes and those things, and you got to hold it together. And um, you've done that today. You've helped people grow. You've, you've, you said what your purpose is. You said what your passion is and how your perspective holds it together. And what you did today is help people do the same. And I appreciate you coming on. Um, I think you and I could probably go for hours on more of this stuff. It's uh it's amazing to me how my journey has brought me to it's people who are so like-minded, but people I look up to um, who are out there doing great things to help people create peace in their life, create presence, more presence and be more present in their life, which creates the wins in their life. Um, you're amazing. You're amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. If anybody, I, I'm, telling people right now get a hold of holly uh she's a life changer for the better and uh holly if there's anything i can do for you just let me know but i want to thank you for coming on today my pleasure remember mindfulness matters and so do you make it a great day yeah everyone make it a great day and thanks for listening uh, to this week's people progressing podcast we told you how you can get a hold of me or get a hold of holly uh, subscribe to this podcast, share it with people and everything. Let's, let's just keep people progressing. Thanks and have a great week.